Good day and welcome back to English History through English Literature. Uh, we already covered part one of the beginnings of literature through the early ages, uh, past the Roman period, into the Anglos and the Saxons, and part one also covered the Middle Ages. Here in part two, we're going to look at the English Renaissance, the Jacobean period, all the way up through the English Restoration. And there will be a part three in which we get into the modern age of English history through English literature. But today, let's continue on with part two, starting with the English Renaissance. Renaissance style and ideas were slow to penetrate England and the Elizabethan era. And you can see the time periods from about 1558 to 1603. And that's usually regarded as the height of the English Renaissance. However, many scholars see its beginnings early in the 1500s instead of in the Elizabethan period before her in the reign of Henry VIII, her father. Now, after William Caxton introduced the printing press in England in 1476, vernacular literature flourished. The Reformation inspired the production of vernacular liturgy, which led to the Book of Common Prayer in 1549, a lasting influence on literary language. The English Renaissance was a cultural and artistic movement in England dating from the late 15th to the 17th century. It is associated with the pan-European Renaissance that's usually regarded as beginning in Italy in the late 14th century. Now, like most of Northern Europe, England saw little of these developments until more than a century later. Now, moving into the Elizabethan period of the English Renaissance, let's start looking at the people who made it the Elizabethan period. Edmund Spencer was one of the most important poets of the Elizabethan period, author of The Fairy Queen, which he wrote in 1590 and in 1596. And this was an epic poem and fantastical allegory celebrating the Tudor dynasty and Elizabeth I. Another major figure, Sir Philip Sidney, was an English poet whose works included Astrophel and Stella, The Defense of Poetry, and The Countess of Pembroke's Arcadia. Now, among the earliest Elizabethan plays are Argobodec by Sackville and Norton and Thomas Kidd's The Spanish Tragedy in 1592. Gorboduc is no notable especially as the first verse drama in English to employ a blank verse. And for the way, it developed elements from the earlier morality plays and a Senecan tragedy in the direction in which would be followed by later playwrights. The Spanish Tragedy is an Elizabethan tragedy written by Thomas Kidd between the areas of 1582 to about 1592, which was popular and influential in its time and established a new genre in English literature theater, the revenge play. Of course, we would be remiss if we didn't cover William Shakespeare. You can see his birth and death dates there. Shakespeare stands out in this period as a poet and a playwright as yet unsurpassed. Shakespeare wrote plays in a variety of genres, including histories such as Richard III and Henry IV, tragedies such as Hamlet, Othello, and Macbeth, comedies such as Midsummer Night's Dream, As You Like It, and Twelfth Night, and he also wrote a few late romances or tragicomedies. Now, Shakespeare's career will continue into the very early Jacobean period, as you can tell by his death date in 1616. Going into the Jacobean period, about 1603 to 1605, in the early 17th century, Shakespeare wrote the so-called problem plays, as well as a number of his best-known tragedies, including Macbeth and King Lear. In his final period, Shakespeare turned to romance or tragic comedy and completed three more major plays, including The Tempest. Now, after Shakespeare's death, the poet and dramatist Ben Jonson was the leading literary figure of the Jacobean era. Jonson's aesthetics hark back to the Middle Ages, and his characters embody the theory of humors, which was based on contemporary medical theory. Johnson's comedies include Valpone around 1605 or 1606 and Bartholomew Fair in 1614. Others who followed Johnson's style include Beaumont and Fletcher, who wrote the popular comedy The Night of the Burning Pestle, probably around 1607, which is a satire of the rising middle class. <laughs> 
Another popular style of theater during the Jacobean times was the revenge play, which was popularized in the Elizabethan era by Thomas Kidd, and then further developed later by John Webster in The White Devil in 1612 and The Duchess of Malfi in 1613. Other revenge tragedies include The Changeling, written by Thomas Middleton and William Rowley, and of course we've already mentioned William Shakespeare. George Chapman, who was around 1559 to 1634, is going to be remembered chiefly for his famous translation in 1616 of Homer's Iliad and Odyssey into English verse. This was the first ever complete translations of either poem into the English language. Now, besides Shakespeare and Ben Jonson, the major poets of the early 17th century included the metaphysical poets. That includes John Donne, George Herbert, Henry Vaughan, Andrew Marvel, and Richard Crashaw. Now, the most important prose work, arguably, of the early 17th century was the King James Bible. This was one of the most massive translation projects in the history of English up until this time. It was started in 1604 and completed in 1611. This represents the culmination of a tradition of Bible translation into English that began with the work of William Tyndale and became the standard Bible of the Church of England. Moving into the late Renaissance, the metaphysical poets John Donne and George Herbert were still alive after 1625, and later in the 17th century, a second generation of metaphysical poets were writing. Again, this includes Richard Crashaw and Andrew Marvel, but we're also going to add in Thomas Traherne and Henry Vaughan. Now, the Cavalier poets were another important group of the 17th century poets, and they came from the classes that supported King Charles I during the English Civil War, which was approximately 1642 to 1651. Now, Cavalier works make use of allegory and classical allusions, and they are influenced by Roman authors Horace, Cicero, and Ovid. John Milton, arguably the last great poet of the English Renaissance, published a number of works before 1660, including L'Arregro in 1631, Il Penseroso in 1634, Comus, a mask, in 1638, and Lysidius in 1638 as well. However, his major epic works, including Paradise Lost in 1667, was published in the Restoration period. Moving into the Restoration age, around 1660 to 1700, Restoration literature includes both Paradise Lost and the Earl of Rochester's Sodom, which is a sexual comedy of the country wife and the moral wisdom of Pilgrim's Progress. This age also saw Locke's two treatises on government, the founding of the Royal Society, the experiments and the holy meditations of Robert Boyle, the hysterical attacks on theaters from Jeremy Collier, and the pioneering literary criticism from Dryden and the first major newspapers. So a lot was happening during these 40 years when it comes to literature. Now the official break in literary culture caused by censorship and radically moist standards under Cromwell's Puritan regime just before this time created a gap in literary tradition, allowing a seemingly fresh start for all forms of literature after the restoration of Charles I. John Milton, one of the greatest English poets, wrote at this time of religious flux and political upheaval. Now, Milton is best known for his epic poem, Paradise Lost. Milton's poetry and prose also reflect deep personal convictions, a passion for freedom and self-determination, and the urgent issues and political turbulence of his day. His celebrated Areopagitica, written in condemnation of pre-publication censorship, is among history's most influential and impassioned defenses of free speech and freedom of the press. Now, prose in the Restoration period is dominated by Christian religious writing, but the Restoration also saw the beginnings of two genres that would dominate later periods, fiction and journalism. Now, religious writing often strayed into the political and economic writing, 
just as political and economic writing implied or somehow directly addressed religion. The Restoration was also the time when John Locke wrote many of his philosophical works. His two treatises on government, which later inspired the thinkers of the Revolution, would be influential. Now, as soon as the previous Puritans' regime ban on the public stage representations was lifted, drama recreated itself quickly and abundantly. The most famous plays of this early Restoration period are the unsentimental or the hard comedies of John Dryden, William Wycherley, and George Etheridge, which reflect the atmosphere at court and celebrate an aristocratic macho lifestyle of unremitting sexual intrigue and conquest. Well, once again, we are finishing up part two of English literature throughout English history. Again, part one covers uh, right after the Roman period with the Anglos and the Saxons and the Middle Ages. This one covers the Renaissance up through the Restoration. And if you look out for part three on my channel, you're going to see moving in through the 1700s into the Romantic periods of the 1800s, all the way through the Victorians and into the modern age. So if you're looking for more information, please leave a comment down below. I can direct you in the right area or check out my part one and part three on the Learning Language Arts channel. Thanks for stopping by. Take care.